Assassin's Creed is a series that is filled with iconography, from logos, phrases and objects. But the one thing that stands out as entirely unique and iconic to the series is the assassin robes, the unique outfits each assassin wears to signify their dedication to the creed, the costumes they use to hide in plain sight. Memorable outfits have been a staple of the Assassin's Creed franchise since the moment it began over a decade ago, and whilst there's been some ups and downs, a hood and flared robes have stood as the most iconic imagery from the franchise. Over the years, the robes of each assassin have been treated kind of like Spider-Man suits, mostly maintaining a similar formula with some unique individualities that make each protagonist stand out. So I thought it was only right that I'd eventually get round to ranking these robes, to figure out which protagonist's outfit is the most iconic. Let's just jump into it, shall we? Coming in last, as per usual, is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and with it, Cassandra's outfit, which would be disingenuous to label as assassin robes. As we all know, Cassandra isn't an assassin, and she takes plenty of opportunities to point that fact out. And so instead of donning an iconic set of robes, she instead sticks with a generic ancient Greek garb that says nothing about her as a character and doesn't stand out as even slightly memorable. Whilst the gold hues of the bracers, boots and helmet stand out, the muted red tunic and the generic Spartan skirt don't add much. Of course, Odyssey is built more than any other game around finding other clothing and gear to replace this outfit with, but if anything, that simply dilutes any kind of memorability this Spartan armour could have had. At number 12, we have Jacob Fry, because he wears a trench coat. That's it. He just wears a suit and a trench coat. Oh, and a top hat. Yeah, they really didn't even try. If you knew what was going to be last on this list, then you probably expected this to come pretty soon after. Eivor, similarly to Cassandra, isn't an assassin, and so she replaces the Greek mercenary armour with layered viking robes, clad with different furs, cloths and leathers. Although again, these aren't assassin robes, I'd say they're a far cry from the completely generic armour of her Greek counterpart. Eivor's Raven Clan set is legitimately memorable, with the flowing layer textures creating a bulky strong look to reflect Eivor's strength as a warrior and a leader. The outfit looks protective and usable, and to to top it all off, it has a cloak with a hood. Listen, when you're at the bottom of the barrel, you need to take what you can get, and the hood tops off what could have been a genuinely cool new adaptation of the franchise's classic robes. Up next, we have Arno's outfit, and to be clear, it's the original version I'm talking about here, because there's about a thousand different Unity outfits that I could be talking about. The thing about Arno's base robes though, the ones on the cover of the game, is that they're incredibly generic. Yes, they are a more traditional set of assassin robes, and I appreciate that, but at the same time, they're similar to Jacob's in the sense that he's kind of just just wearing a suit with a blue hooded coat on top of it. The only particularly interesting thing about the robes was that they were blue, and I think most people took the first opportunity they could to get rid of them. And I know that the point is that they're novice robes and they're not meant to look great, but like, don't make that the main outfit of your game. Now if this were a ranking of his master assassin robes, this would probably be a different story, but considering we only see those for one scene of the main game, I can't justify replacing his generic blue boredom with those. Evie Fry's robes, similarly to her brother's, are basically made up of a normal outfit and a trench coat. However, what sets her look apart is the way in which this jacket flows down her body, with the wide neck and hood creating a silhouette more akin to the traditional look of the Levantine assassin. Along with that, the red and white accents make her stand out as an assassin, in subtle yet clear your ways, as opposed to Jacob, who again is just wearing normal street clothes for pretty much the entire game. Like Rogue itself, Shay's outfit is a very forgettable middle of the pack look that utilises the Templar aspect of his character by simply giving him robes that are black and red instead of white and red. That being said, the high collar, the straps and the Templar cross all add to a unique look that definitely stands out from his protagonist counterparts. At number 7, we have Edward, who similarly to Shay, has an outfit that is much more sailor than it is assassin, which to be fair makes complete sense. Despite this though, it still encapsulates everything an assassin's outfit should be, with the iconic hooding cloak being complemented with leather and various belts, making him one with the crowd regardless of whether he's on a pirate island or in the midst of a bustling city. It's a truly iconic set of assassin robes, and at the same time it fits the tone and setting of the game, a combination that wasn't able to be achieved with Jacob or Cassandra. Obviously, thanks to to Assassin's Creed Origins being, you know, an origin story, Bayek's Medjai outfit aren't assassin robes in the literal sense of the word, however they were the basis of what the iconic assassin look would be, and I think the design team got it just about perfect. Bayek's robes were very different to what we come to know by this point, instead of one set of flowing robes, the outfit is more a mismatched collection of clothes and armour that Bayek had put together in his life prior to the game. Being more weathered and somewhat cluttered reflect the stage of life and the state of mind Bayek's in, being an exhausted man but still a strong, 
experienced and durable warrior. As well as this, the ability to upgrade your bracers and armor on top of the robes was reminiscent of being able to add armor to the outfits of the Etio trilogy. Another upside is that Bayek's original Magi robes are easily the best outfit in the game excluding DLCs, which gives them a feeling of importance. Breaking into the top 5, we finally get our first setting of Etio, and this one might be a little controversial because I know people adore Etio's granddaddy revelations robes. The layers in the bottom half, the patterns that line the hood and the chest, the detailed design of the torso, the slight design changes to make the robes fit more in the setting, that's all great. That being said, they are grey. Yes, I'm fully aware that the switch to grey robes is a reflection of Ezio's character in Revelations, but just because something has meaning behind it doesn't mean it's actually good. Personally, I always dye this outfit white the first chance I get, and when you do, they look absolutely stunning. But the grey, as well as the fur on the shoulder reminiscent of the armour of Brutus, take away slightly from what is otherwise a fantastic outfit. I give Assassin's Creed 3 a lot of flack, but the way it handles its robes is one thing I've got to give it credit for. The robes themselves are sleek, stylish, and practical, with a design that really feels like an evolution of the original Levantine robe, and the way they incorporate the classic assassin style with Connor's native heritage is fantastic, if maybe not as subtle as you'd like. The switch to white and blue reflected the shift into a new era of sorts, as well as playing into the setting of the American Northwest in the midst of a revolutionary war. However, it maintains the iconic red belt with the assassin insignia, a small thing that pays homage to the assassins that came before him. But what really brings this outfit up is the way the game's story and its characters treated it. Instead of being handed these robes from the offset, they were given actual significance with Connor having to work, to train, to prove himself before he could earn the right to don the robes of a true assassin. At this point in the series, the robes of an assassin were still treated like a big deal, and there's nothing I love more than when significant pieces of iconography are given their respect. Despite Brotherhood being my favourite game in the franchise, I've always had a slight love-hate relationship with the master assassin robes Ezio dons in it. Every part of these robes in a vacuum is absolutely brilliant. The stunning red accents, the pointed hood, the gorgeous insignia on the belt, the heightened collar, all of these details come together to create robes that feel like a matured version of Giovanni's, fitting Ezio's character and brotherhood brilliantly. The slight problem I have though is the outfit itself, for whatever reason, looks kind of bulky and heavy. It looks like it would lack maneuverability and practicality when running through the streets of Rome, and all the added straps and the massive cloak just add to that bulky feeling, which creates a slight dichotomy with the fast-paced, agile combat that the game so often prays for. Despite that slight clunkiness though, they are of course fantastic. Altair's robes may be the definition of beauty in simplicity. Being the first look we ever had at the iconic assassin outfit, these robes set the standard for what assassin robes should be. With the sleek, slim fit making Altair appear agile, the knife belt and the back strap being both practical and stylish, and the minimal colour making whoever wears them seem even more mysterious. To put it simply, these robes are iconic, they are the basis for what assassin robes should be, and they also just look really really cool. You know what, that's all the justification this position is getting. They look cool. As iconic as Altair's robes are, nothing could ever top these bad boys. Giovanni's robes, aka the Assassin's Creed 2 robes, are in all aspects of the word beautiful. Mashing the subtle style of the 12th Crusade Levantine robes with the extravagant colourful fashion of the Italian Renaissance, this outfit stands out no matter what it's compared to. The layered torso uses the red accents to create a slim agile look, the flared shoulders reflect Ezio's confidence and arrogance, and the shorter cut off of the robes makes them look practical and parkour ready. The new option to dye the robes and add armour to them also allowed for a bunch of opportunities to improve what are already gorgeous from the moment Ezio finds them in Giovanni's study, and I truly believe that if you ask 99% of people which robes they think of when they think Assassin's Creed, it'd be Giovanni's outfit that stands above the rest. But of course, as always, that is just my opinion, so feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, it would really help me out if you could hit like, and if you're new here and want to see more shut the fuck up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe with post notifications turned on. If you want to support the channel, Patreon and donation links are in the description below. And with all that being said, I've been Joe, aka Fairness Garib, and I will see you in the next one.